Hi folks, this is a video about the Google Sandbox and how to get out of it. This is actually uh, what myself and a lot of SEO experts believe to be is the case for a lack of getting high rankings in Google. If you're suffering from uh, a website that isn't doing too well with getting traffic and all that kind of stuff, odds are it's probably because it's in the Google Sandbox. So I'm going to get into what this thing is, my personal experiences, but I'm going to give you some examples of my personal websites. Um, and I'll also show you how to get out of the Sandbox because I've done it again and again. Uh, and if you know what to do, it's something that is naturally expected so you don't have to worry about it and there's a lot of people that quit SEO because they don't understand about this kind of stuff and once they do they will be able to grow their website so real quick let me start off by giving you my uh, SEO resume I am someone that has been doing this stuff for uh, many years since 2007 and uh, I've had websites and blogs and articles and all that sort of stuff that has been ranked high on Google and still gets ranked high on Google and I have had millions of highly targeted visitors come to my websites I know about traffic generation through SEO it's one of my specialties now that leads me into the next thing, which is what exactly is the Google Sandbox? Some of you may have heard of it, some of you might have, may have not. But I like to think of it as a parole period where uh, basically your website is, while it's in the sandbox, it will not rank high on Google. But it will only start to do that once it comes out of the sandbox. Now, if you look at the blogs from Google, their webmaster blogs and all that kind of stuff, I personally haven't seen them actually admit to such a thing. But every single website that I've ever started, whether it be a blog, whether it be whatever kind of page it is, um, if I try to target a keyword, if I try to write a few articles, I will notice that it will not rank high for weeks and months. And um, like I said, I have connections to a lot of SEO experts, and we're all in agreement that the Google Sandbox exists. Now, uh, Google, the Google Sandbox is also uh, known by other things. Whereas, if you have, uh, if you don't have website authority, you will be in the Google Sandbox, or if you don't have website maturity, you will also be in the Sandbox. Now, these things are actually uh, attained through having a, a website that matures and has a long period of time to rank like maybe several months but we'll get to that in a moment but uh, one other thing I want to talk about is that you will be in the sandbox everyone has to go through that if you're trying to rank on Google you do have to start off in the sandbox period it is normal it is okay don't let it bug you now there are people who believe that there's artificial ways that you can get out of the sandbox and I just want to debunk that real quick it doesn't matter how many backlinks you send to your website it doesn't matter how many massive shares or followers you have that comment on your site or share your blog or even if it becomes viral if you're in the sandbox all these things they will help you once you're out of it but once, but while you're still in it none of these things are actually going to help boost the the speed at which your site gets out of the sandbox okay so I'll show you the natural way the white hat way to get out of it now um, I want to share four different sites with you to describe how the sandbox works. Now, let's talk about the first site over here. This is a website that I started uh, a number of years ago. It was in 2013, mid-2013. And it went from like, uh, it took about six months to get out of the sandbox. When I was blogging almost every single day, it's a, it's a website about how to make money online. And it, it, it's in a very competitive niche market where whatever keywords I target, there's a lot of other blogs that are competing for that kind of stuff. And that's basically how you judge competition. And the more competition that there is, the harder it is to rank. So so naturally, when it comes to the sandbox, uh, you will find that it takes a lot longer for uh, your website to get out of the sandbox if it's in a competitive niche market. Now, right now, the site is doing well because it's been out of the sandbox for years. But um, it, this just goes to show, as I will be explaining, that, that um, your competition also plays a role in how quickly you get out of the sandbox. Now, for the second site, this one is still in the sandbox. Now, the way that you can tell that it's in the sandbox is if you notice over here, uh, since January 2019, there's hardly ever so. So blue ones are uh, uh, clicks and uh, the light blue ones are impressions, meaning how many times my website pops up on Google. Now, this is a report I took from Google Webmaster Tools. And, you know, um, this is a normal thing to expect, okay? So uh, whatever website you have, if you're just starting out with it, these kinds of graphs are going to be normal for you. So as you can see over here for, you know, the most of uh, January, then February, and then in March, it was like there was hardly any activity. There was hardly any impressions, hardly any clicks. But I was doing the things that I'm going to be talking to you about in a, in a short moment about what I did. And now, as you can see, it's almost like there's a crazy boost going on. It's still not a lot of clicks. I'm not getting one to two, maybe three clicks sometimes. But the impressions are rising. There is growth happening to the site. It is showing up more and more and more on Google. Okay, And this is a naturally occurring process, which is only going to keep sloping up and up and up and up until I can get 50 visitors a day, 100 visitors a day, 1,000 visitors a day, even more. This is all possible to do. You just have to have the patience to get out of the sandbox. Now, for the third option, I'm uh, this is a site that recently came out of the sandbox. Now, 
As you can see, every few days I would get one or so clicks from Google, and this can be very discouraging. But again, if you understand that the Google Sandbox is normal, this is completely okay. And you don't have to worry about that because this is going to improve over time. Now, uh, this site was basically very, it didn't even have clicks for the first three months or something. It actually had impressions coming and going. It wasn't a lot of them at all. But as you can see, there's more activity going on as time goes along. Okay, and like I said with the earlier site, it is a slope that's going to keep going up and up and up and up, provided I keep doing the things that I'll be talking to you about in a short moment. And finally, the last site, this is a site that I started, I believe it was last year, and it's already out of the sandbox. That's pretty obvious. But uh, what's going on here is that it was in a, uh, a, a niche market which involves drones, and that uh, the competition for this niche isn't that high. Uh, it, it's about mid-range, so there's like there's niches with very low competition, niches with medium competition, and there's niches like Make Money Online, which is very high competition niches. This one is in the middle, so uh, generally speaking, it takes about three to four months to get out of it. Now, um, I want to basically go into how long do the sandbox lasts. Now, in my experience, the range is anywhere from three to six months. Okay. Now, it's closer to three months if you try to rank for keywords that are not that are in not too competitive niches. So, uh, as I was just saying, if you're in a niche market that is not very competitive, you should be out of the sandbox uh, in three months or so. Okay. You should start seeing more clicks, more activity, more your site getting more organic visitors from Google. Now, in niche markets that are much more competitive, like make money online. Uh, how to get six-pack abs, uh, anti-aging, something like that. Those are much more competitive niches which have a lot of blogs trying to compete for that. And in those circumstances, you're looking at six months or more uh, for you to get out of the sandbox. So, for example, this website over here, actually, it's, uh, yeah, this this website right here. This is actually an SEO site that, that, that I started in September of last year. And only around maybe, I would say, uh, early March of 2019 that it finally started coming out of the sandbox and it took about th six months now I've been looking at side after side after side and talking to people again and again and this range that I'm giving you and the way to judge that range based on the competition of the niche is pretty accurate okay and uh, just expect this to be normal. Now, this leads to the most important part of this whole video, which is how do you get the site out of the sandbox? Because once it's out of the sandbox, you're going to start seeing higher rankings. You're going to see more clicks. You're going to see more impressions. Your traffic is basically going to grow. That's what any SEO person wants to achieve. So how does one uh, go about getting out of the sandbox? Now, in my experience, while it is in the parole period, which is another name that I use for the sandbox, it needs to your website needs to establish authority. Okay, in whatever niche that it's in, and in order to do that, it needs to produce enough content for Google to finally start taking it seriously and ranking it higher. Now, there are a number of ways that you can do this, but my personal uh, advice is to start with a niche. Always make sure that you choose a niche market. Now, I have some videos in my playlist, uh, if you look at my uh, history, which will explain how to pick a niche, but uh, very, very simply, weight loss is a very broad market. I wouldn't go for that. I would go for something like... Uh, uh, how to how to lose belly fat or how to lose love handles. Those are niche markets, okay? Uh, then what I would do after picking a niche is I would target low competition keywords that are keywords that are in the niche. So I would, for example, review uh, supplements for burning fat, uh, uh, exercises for getting rid of love handles. There's many different variations of keywords that you can find. I would compile a whole list of those things, okay? Now once I would do that, I would write a blog post every day if possible for each keyword that I find. And the more keywords I write, that means the mo more posts I can create. Now if you can write a one blog post a day that is amazing that is one of the best things that you can do to grow your SEO and get out of the sandbox faster but blogging through through two to three times a week is actually considered to be pretty good actually awesome too by the way blogging once a week is okay it's the bare minimum as far as I'm concerned and blogging anything less than that is bad because Google likes to see a site that blogs frequently and basically keeps growing and growing and growing its content it shows them that, that you're you should be taken much more seriously and that's one of the components of getting out of the sandbox now Every time you write a blog post, you want it to have, in my experience, 1,500 words or more of solid, high-quality content. Now, I'll be linking uh, my uh, article that I wrote on my SEO site that talks about the uh, sandbox effect. And you will notice that uh, much of the things that I'm explaining in uh, this video, are uh, they exist in this uh, article. And any article that I write on that site, by the way, and any articles I write on any site for that matter. Now, 
it's very important that you do what's known as interlinking on your website. So you want to interlink your blog posts together. And that basically helps Google crawl more and more of your website and rank it better. And you also want to externally link your articles. So for example, uh, let's say that I'm talking about how to burn belly fat or I'm reviewing a product. Maybe I can cite some kind of study that shows that it works and I want to externally link to another page. Now. Uh, some people might say that you shouldn't uh, link to another website, but uh, in my experience, externally linking to provide people with more value actually tells Google that you're trying to do that, and it's actually another great way to get out of the sandbox. Now, you want to do all these things that I just explained as actively as you can while you're in the sandbox, because while you're in this parole period, as I keep saying, the better behavior you show on your website by growing it, by improving it, by doing all these sorts of things, the better your results are going to be once you're out of the sandbox. So the more work you do while you're in the sandbox, the more rankings and traffic you'll get while you're out of it. So don't be lazy about this. Do more while you have this time to do it, okay? Now, uh, for low competition niches, in my experience, Aim to get at least 30 articles or blog posts out while you're in the sandbox, and you should start to see yourself, your website, that is, to get get out of it by the, by the time two or three months comes along. For mid-competition niches like the drone one that I was telling you about, try to aim to get at least 40 or more articles out while you're in the sandbox, and you might see results after four months. Now, in high-competition niches like Make Money Online, SEO, you're looking at about six months. But in those six months, while your site is in the sandbox, try to get 50 or more articles out that stick to this uh, quota or, or these uh, bullet points that I was giving you. All right. Now, again, I want to finish by saying that every site can get out of the sandbox if it grows its content and follows these particular things. Okay. And uh, you have to understand that the Google Sandbox is, is a very important tool. In fact, I appreciate and respect it because it basically weeds out poor quality websites. There's a lot of people out there that want to succeed in SEO, but they're not willing to work hard to grow their websites the way that they should. That's why many of them fail. And a lot of them also leave because of impatience. They see that their site isn't ranking and they don't know about the Google Sandbox playing a big part in that. So they decide that you know SEO is bad, SEO is dead, whatever the case is, and they quit. Now that you've seen this video and you understand about the Sandbox and what's really going on, you should be able to go back to your blog, uh, your website, and continue to grow it under these quotas, under these bullet points that I've been giving you. So, like I said, I'll leave a link below that will take you to this particular uh, article that's on the sandbox. And you're welcome to browse my website because I cover a wide range of SEO topics, including, you know, besides getting out of the sandbox, I explain other things that that impact r ranking, backlinks. I talk about how, how to raise your Google ranking if your site is performing badly, like specific things. I even offer videos and tutorials, all free content. And you're welcome to check this out. Leave comments on, on this uh, video uh, with your questions if you want to, or leave comments on this page that I'll be linking to. And you'll notice that m many of the things that, I'll, that I was talking about, like you know, 1,500 words, interlinking, interlinking, externally linking, that is all here on this page. So you can use this as reference to basically do the same kinds of things on your website. Okay. So that finalizes everything. Make sure that as you do these things and grow your website that you don't do anything black hat, like you know, spammy back links or copying other people's content. Make sure everything you write is your own stuff. Write high quality content, grow your website, and you will get out of the sandbox. So thank you so much for watching this video and good luck in your SEO efforts.